everyone. It's Morgan and Angie from The Shift, from people pleasing to living and loving fully. Today, we are going to be talking about people pleasing in your romantic relationships. And specifically, we're going to be talking about that question. What's that question? <laughs> are you really keeping the peace? Are you really keeping the peace? Thank you, Angie. Because often in people pleasing, we think, oh, if I do this or if I don't do this, it's going to keep the peace. But is that really true? So, so let's talk a little bit about some examples. Because I just want you guys to start off by just asking yourself, how is it that I am people pleasing in my, with my partner, your spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever? How are you people pleasing? And maybe you don't know. Maybe you think that you're not, but I'll tell you, most people are on some level or another. So how are you people pleasing? It may be saying yes when you really want to say no. It may be keeping quiet about your own feelings because you're afraid of hurting your partner's feelings. It may be not fully being yourself because you're worried about how your partner will react. Will they be angry? Will they reject you? It may be taking too much responsibility around the chores or the children or whatever it is you have going in your life. It may be that you don't allow yourself to ask for help. So just asking yourself again, how is it that I am people pleasing in, in my romantic relationship? Hey Morgan, can I share with you something? This just came to me to share this story. It's a yeah. very story, but when I was about 16 years old, I had a boyfriend. Oh. And, <laughs> um, we went to my grandma's house. We were hanging out at my grandma's house and he came over there and my grandma's car was parked in the driveway. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I don't remember how it happened, but he ended up hitting her bumper. Like when he was leaving that night, he hit her bumper and uh, it created some damage, not a lot. <laughs> I thought it was really minimal. And I was thinking, Grandma, just turn it into your insurance. I didn't understand at the time that right. when you do that, your claims increase and all that. Well, she did not want to turn this into her insurance. She wanted him to pay for it. Yeah. And, and I just remember thinking, uh -huh. I've always been such a peacemaker, like trying to keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, what happened at the time, like he was like, that's ridiculous. I'm not going to pay for that. And, and then I'm, I'm in the middle. Cause I didn't hit her car. Right. He right. hit the car, but he was refusing to pay for it. And so what did I do? I went into my savings account as a 16 year old, got the money out, paid her when he should have paid or they should have worked it out together. Wow. And um, you see, that's a perfect example of people pleasing and not letting them work it out. Like I felt like I was so competent that I was the peacemaker. I had to keep her happy and I had to keep him happy. In the meanwhile, I didn't keep myself happy. I was resentful. So I just thought that just came to me to tell you that, that that's a great story of being the peacemaker, thinking that I was keeping peace, but it was really an indication of that relationship and how dysfunctional it was. Right. So. Yeah, <laughs> that is such a perfect story. And I love thinking about little 16 year old Angie. <laughs> yeah. oh. I'm here early. To be here. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. That is so perfect. Yeah. Because instead of, yeah, it's, you know, having the confidence to say, okay, this wasn't my fault. So, you know, this has nothing to do with me. You were like, I'm going to keep the peace. So I'm going to try to fix everything. And it ended up just being unfair to you. Exactly. You have had to pay for that. So that's, that's so good. That's yeah. a perfect example. Um, yeah. And it was a boyfriend, right? It was a boyfriend, right. a romantic relationship. And, and another thought coming to me to just to say this right now is that I think my people pleasing tendencies got started and playing the peacemaker when I was really, really young yeah. because my dad was very um, ne like neglectful. He did not give me or my brother the attention. And so I feel like I was wanting that attention from people. Um, and, and so 
I learned that, well, if, if I'm going to get your love, I need to please you. So I think that's pretty important to say. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it makes sense that it started that whole habit for you and that, you know, we just keep building on it because that's all we know, you know, that's when we foundationally learn that kind of thing that, so that totally makes sense. Um, Yeah. You know, your story made me think of actually a story that Jared told me. So Jared's my husband. When he was 16 and he had a girlfriend, she would want to talk on the phone all the time, right? And so he, you know, once a week would go play video games with his, with his, his, I wanted to say boyfriends, his guy friends. (laughs) It's not the same thing anyway. (laughs) Um, So he, he'd want to play video games with his guy friends and they'd have like, you know, they'd stay up late and have pizza and play video games together. And, and that was like his, his boy time. Right. But um, she would always want to call and talk to him. So he'd go sit out on the porch and, you know, and, and he's not one to like talking on the phone. Right. But so here she is like saying, you know, you know, just talking about whatever, you know, they were seeing each other all the time. So it wasn't like she had a lot of important things to say or anything. Um, And he just would sit there and get more and more frustrated because he's missing out on pizza and video games. And so he would try to tell her like, oh, well, you know, this has been fun, but I need to go. And she would give him a hard time about it. Like that, you know, she's the girlfriend and he needs to be talking to her and whatever. And, and so anyway, it it just made me think of that example of like, of him not being able to set that boundary and say, oh, like, I don't want to do this thing. (laughs) And, and, you know, it, you know, at at 16, you know, you're probably going to take things more personal than hopefully you would now as an adult. But even at that age, you can start to learn to say, you know what, this is, I don't think this is something that needs to be real offensive to you or anything, but I'm having guys time, you know? (laughs) So yeah, yeah, that's great. It's great example. Yeah. So funny. Um, yeah, you got me thinking about all my, uh, 16 year old boyfriends, all so many of them. (laughs) I just kidding. And that's what we got. We want you guys to think about is when you do something that you really don't want to do. And this, is on like every level of communication, of action. When you do something you really don't want to do and you think you're keeping the peace, it's usually a very short-term solution. It's not long-term, it's, it's not sustainable. Mm-hmm. So we just want you to really start thinking about how you're showing up in your romantic relationship. Now, how we do one thing, we do many, so it's likely going to show up in other areas of your life and with other relationships too. And what Morgan and I, our, our purpose is really to help create a movement where women start to speak up, not to be jerks, okay? We're not talking about that. We're talking about speaking up in a way that allows you to feel empowered and allows you to feel good about yourself. And guess what? you're meeting two needs. You're meeting your own need, which your need is we want to feel love. We want to feel connected. That's one of the the needs that we have. But when we enable another person, like I enabled my boyfriend back then, we're not meeting their needs either. And the needs are more about significance and um, the ability to, I've got this approach to life. You know, it's more of a, you don't have this and I need to swoop in and figure this out for you. True. True. So we're, we're trying to help you create, go from these unhappy relationships because they are unhappy when we're not being authentic to really creating a fulfilling connection with the people we love. Yes. Yes. And, and recognizing, yeah. Like, like that example with your boyfriend from 16, like you taking responsibility for him that's robbing him of the opportunity to learn how to deal with a situation like that, to, to learn how to deal with a, an, you know, an unfortunate circumstance and to realize that he needs to take responsibility for his mistakes. You robbed him of that, that chance. So, so you thought you were helping him, but really maybe it wasn't. And I'm not saying this, you know, to dog on you, obviously to help everyone else see that that really wasn't the best for either of you. Exactly. It really, yeah. but we sure believe it, don't we? We we convince ourselves that we are keeping the peace, but are you really? Are we really? No, we are not. And 
Right. Tomorrow, we're actually going to be doing a very live interactive masterclass where we're going to go into detail about a couple of things about how we communicate. It's mostly about honest communication, but how can we say no without being a jerk? Right. right. Really, we're, we're fearful that people will not like us if we speak our truth. So we're going to actually role play and we're going to give some scenarios of how to do that and what to say and, and so forth. Um, Morgan, you want to say anything yeah, about that? I'm super excited about the class tomorrow and it, it is going to be live and interactive so that we can get specific examples from you guys and help role play how to have these conversations with your spouse as well. Because again, sometimes we recognize that we're people pleasing, but we don't know how to stop or we are, are thinking that it's for the best for everyone, but mm -hmm. it's not. And, and we're here to help you see why it's not and, and what, what kind of things you can say in order to step into your power without being rude, without being mean. Um, so, so yeah, we're really excited about that. Tomorrow, that's going to be at three. So Wednesday, what's the date tomorrow? The 20... August 28th. Yes, at 3 p.m. Central Time. Right. And that'll go about an hour and a half. And, and it's going to be great because you'll get advice from, from both of us and we'll help work through some examples that, that we're going through and, and then help you guys with yours. So it's going to be awesome. So, so yeah, so I just invite you guys to, to think uh, over the, these next couple of days, think about how it is that you're people pleasing in your romantic relationship and, and ask yourself, is it really worth it? Are the benefits outweighing the costs? And really ask yourself that because remember, if, if your whole reason for people pleasing is that you don't want to deal with rejection, if someone, you know, if you step up into your power, that what kind of life are you living if you're constantly not allowed to be yourself? That's not a life that's worth living. So, so right. we're super excited to be talking to you guys about all this tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching this video please like and subscribe. We've got a lot more content like this coming for you guys because we are very passionate about this, about this, this company we've created together, The Shift, from people pleasing to loving and living fully because that's what we've done in our lives. We're done with the people pleasing. We're ready to help spread how we've learned and continue to learn how to live and love more fully every day. So thank you guys. Comment below and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye.